I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Today we have 3v3 ladder action, among the best sorts of action. We have the hot team here on the right, cold team on the left. Let's go in and meet them. In the air position at the back for hot team, this is Trios, 1265 rated in Eon, and he's an orange. In front of him, this is Spaced Out, 870 rated and Cybran, he's in red. And last but not least for Hot Team, this is Danky Kang, who is 923 rated. He's also Cybran and he's in Burgundy. And facing off against them on the Code team over here, in the air position at the back, we have Drags, who is 1107 rated and he's also Eon. He's in Mauve. Ahead of him, on this side we have Pokute, who is 963 rated and Cybran, and he is in Baby Blue. And last but not least, we have RCX Dude. Now RCX Dude is actually a good friend of mine in real life. I was there when he first played Faf and I could pretend to be the one who knew all about it. Now he's better than I am, so there's that. He didn't send this game by the way, so um, that's just coincidence. Am I going to be biased towards him? No. Anyway, RCX is 1029 rated, he's playing Seraphim, and he's in dark blue. So, racially, we have Eon Cybran Cybran, and Eon Cybran Seraphim. Trust RCX to make a mess of things. Anyway, a look at the map. Not a great deal of reclaim. These four little hillocks here have a decent amount of reclaim these ones also have mechs on central plateau has a mechs but the main points of contention this game are going to be these six expansions of four mechs each across the middle of the map early scout out there from drags to get an idea of what the enemy are up to and Spaced has come forward very early with his com to grab this expansion pretty greedy. Not as greedy though, or at least not as riskily greedy as this. Pokute here has a trio of engineers which are coming forward. They're completely unsupported. They're heading for that expansion of four mexes, but they're on their own with nothing to guard them. And like one tank from Danki could absolutely deal with those and it's usually best to kill expanding engineers rather than engineers in the base unless you can get a really good cluster because the expanding engineers not only have to be replaced but they have to get all the way out there as well whereas engineers in the base they'll just they'll just be replaced by more engineers from the base and it looks like Trios is going to take advantage of that as a Danky. Danky has a tank, Trios has a bomber. Are we going to see any nice pickups here? The bomber comes in and the turret that this engineer was trying to put up is cancelled. One of the engineers dies. He starts to get on an A turret but then dodges as the bomber comes back. It doesn't work though and he's just about caught in the blast. Good bombing from Trios. I see a transport flying over there from Drags. We'll look at that in just a moment. But the th bomber comes along and takes out the third NG. So he did get up three of the mexes but he can't reinforce them. And Trios' bomber can probably clear them up at will. And he's going to. Meanwhile that little drop we spoke about is coming all the way down here from Drags. He lands a couple of NGs, but he hasn't given them any orders immediately, and it looks like Danky knows they're there. He's sending a scout, he's sending a tank. He'll be able to pick them up. Up here, 
in the north of the map, it looks like Krios is also sending bombers for RCX. Does RCX have any defense? Not yet. This engine could be a casualty. And it is a good shot, but an anti-air tank has come out for RCX and is scampering on its silly little seraphim legs after the bomber. I don't like this response from RCX, to be honest. He's sending an entire army, including all the land, after that one bomber. Why? And the bomber has just moved on down here to threaten this expansion. If he can pick up that, that's going to be particularly t Oof, poor RCX. Three of his NGs down in one hit. Dragst has been driven away here by this tank, but he's supporting with a bomber and his NGs are hiding in the corner. Look at these cowardly little engineers hiding in the corner. And they're setting up a radar. I like that play. Meanwhile, there are still bombers everywhere. Danky has bombers. Trios has bombers. Dragst has a bomber for the other side. Pokute dropped this central plateau, but one of Trios's bombers dealt with it over here. Dragst is edge building the same plateau. I don't know if I like this choice of putting an air factory up. They know it's contested, and Pokute might easily drop and finish that, so I'd have a land factory up to, sit, to just patrol a bit over here. But Danky is higher rated than I am by a little bit, so. Who am I to talk? This plateau has also been dropped by Pokuto, but this one doesn't have any actual mechs on. This one does, and he's dropped it, and he's claimed the mechs on it. See, this I don't like the land factory so much. There's only one mechs up here to fight over with not much space, so like an air factory, if you really want to defend it, build a turret. What's this silly engineer here from space doing? Drag's engines in the corner have finally been caught by one mantis from Danky. Meanwhile, Danky's got that air factory edge built. He's sending out a couple of engines to get the reclaimer mechs on this plateau, but after that, we can see down there in the corner he's got Jester's queued up. So maybe we'll be seeing some sneaky little gunship play. Meanwhile, the T1 bomber play continues. However, this is looking quite interesting. Danky has pushed forward with some units. He's getting T2 on his comm. And he's going to steal this mechs off Pokute. Or if not steal, then at least destroy. But Pokute has this force that's come around the edge and can come and try and threaten. But there's a comm here. There's two point defences here. I don't think that this force from... Pokute will get much done. He's massing again here, but that's quite a bit of spam coming up from Danky. In the north, looks like RCX and Spaced were lining up for a big spam battle, but Spaced has fallen back. Over here, Danky's advanced with this force, but Pokuto has caught him and cut him off. And here we have Dragst going for Tito on his com. So, if this spam comes in, it might make the difference, but these guys at the moment, they're just sacrificial. In that, they're going to die for, I say a sacrifice, they're just a loss. They're going to die for very little gain here, because they were on their own not enough to really make a difference as those mantis from Pokute swarm in. But Danky is massing another decent sized army. Pokute's army also masses up. It was quite even. This com will swing it if Danky tries to push though, so 
Ideally, Danky will try and engage the spam without getting to this actual expansion and engaging the com as well. And Swifties have come out and are patrolling around on the hot side of the map from Draxd. I guess he's going to try and... And they've been seen, they've been pung. I suspect he's going to try and lock down any air that the other team try to produce. Trios is at T2 air here and he is producing Swifties of his own. He's got a lock queued up. But if Drax can only see them and just fly around here for a bit, he'll be able to stop that Swifty production. Here come Drax's Swifties patrolling around, seeing if they can spot something. And on this side, RCX is pushing forward. He might be able to force Spaced's army back. And if, But he's only got about the same number of dudes as Spaced. Out are coming the Swifties for Trios. But look at this, he's carefully hiding them so that Drags doesn't see them. And Drags thinks that he has air. If RCX completes Nano, then that comm, plus these Urshis that are now trickling in, will be more than enough to take that. But Space doesn't know that, and so he's holding back and not trying to get the damage done while he can. Those five Swifties from Drags, they have just flown around and not found anything, and now there's at least a force to match them out here from Trios. So good hiding his air power from Drags there by Trios. Danky's aggression has been held back. There was a reasonable force over here not so long ago, and now Pokote is rolling straight over it. And if Danky was hoping to be able to push it and swarm over it, that's going to be a lot harder now because Dragst is putting up T2 point defences and tactical missile defences in their expansion here. But it looks like we've got the push from RCX. He's got a decent horde of spam. He's got some Ilshis in there, but Spaced has a bigger horde of spam, but no T2. And also, RCX's comm has completed gun and nano and is walking up behind them. Ha! Drag says we got air, but he didn't know about that. And that spam from RCX has been utterly crushed by the horde from Spaced Out. And RCX falls back with his comm. Now, this is all T1, so gun, nano, plus those Ilshis should be enough to deal with it. But even so, if I were RCX, I would be a little worried for my position if his Ilshis are falling. His commander is having pings thrown at him saying, focus him down, but that's a lot of Ilshis running up to join the comm, and I think in combination with the gun and nano, that will be enough for RCX to hold. And Spaced Out has the same idea, and he begins to fall back. And RCX was barely scratched by that, so... um. Underestimating a Sarah Rambo com is something you should never do. I like to play Sarah myself. Well, I say that. I always said it's a random race and I like it when I roll a Sarah because I can go nano comms and Ilshis. And that's what RCX is doing right now. I remember when RCX only ever played Cyber and it's good to see him diversifying. Meanwhile, what else have we got around the map? Looks like we have a similar situation over here, actually. We've got a bit of T2 for Danky and his comms here, versus a lot of T1 spam from Pokute, but Pokute is being more cautious. He isn't pushing in. Hot Team are ahead on Eco by 50, and they've collected a significant lead in mass. That's something like 15, 20,000 more mass collected. And given that we're just building up forces at the moment, that could pay off. But Pocket is thinking, nah, I won't go for this base. It's got lots of PD, it's got lots of spam defending it. I'll just go around. And so he goes up. But Danky pursues, and Pocket feels forced to engage. I wouldn't have done that. I'd have just run. Because, oh, but Danky thinks there's a little too much there for him and falls back. I think he could have taken that. And Pocket falls back as well. He could have gone on up here. We'll see if he does more on that later. But 
No time to waste as RCX is pushing on spaced. His comms there, a decent horde of Oshis there, and space doesn't feel he can hold it and he's falling back. This will be a lot of production to lose. He's got one rhino and never against those Oshis, that's one rhino. Is loses to one Oshi, let alone however many that is. Lots. And this is going to be a bit of a crush for RCX. He is going to take out this entire base. He's going to get the mexes, he's going to get the factories. The spam is going to be safe just but only because Spaced Out ran away with it and I guess that's the right thing to do. He'd have lost that fight anyway but he might have made it easier to stop RCX coming forward if he was able to take out the Ilshis and as it is he did not do that. And RCX advances forward again. But I see other shenanigans happening. As RCX pushes forward over here, Spaced is sending his units to counter. But on the left, it looks like we've got a force matching up between Pocket A and Danke. And up here, we have TMLs coming out for Spaced. There's a couple of tasty T2 mixes there for RCX, and if Space can hit them, that would be nice. But we've got to look here as RCX pushes in with his com. He's falling back, he's kiting, good work with the Ilshis, but that's a lot of spam for him to take on. Meanwhile, down here on the other side, Danke is being forced back. There are T2 turrets here, there's a T2 gun com here, there's a lot of spam here. And sure, Danke has a bit of T2, but it's not going to be enough. RCX has lost a couple of mechs up here. And his com is taking damage. And watch this, this is a big wave of gunships in from Trios. Will it be enough? There's flak there. And if they target that first, but they don't. They're targeting the ACU, not the flak. RCX is shedding health, but he's got Nano, he's got Vet, and that flak is just tearing apart these gunships. More come in though, will it be enough? Down here we can see that Drags has been forced back. RCX down to only 7,000 health. But he's got more flak coming in, and finally Trios notices the flak and targets it, but I think that's too little too late, and I think RCX is going to get out of there. The fact it dodges, there's only two gunships left, three gunships, there's more come in all the time. Ooh, that flak was down to only a couple of hits, and the flak dies. There's two gunships left to fight RCX. He's on 7,000 hits though, over here we can see that Pocote and Drags have easily held, and those gunships fall back, leaving a decent horde of Urshis, and RCX's comms still on half health. If they'd gone for the flak first rather than RCX, they might have got him, but no such luck. In the south, we saw him thinking about this earlier, and this time he's doing it. Pocote is pushing forward with his spam, and rather than take on Drag's base, he's just Drag's Danky's base, he's just going up and going round the top. And there's very little here to stop him. A couple of rhinos, and that will actually do some damage, because I can see one rhino in there for Pocote, but that's mainly all T1, and the T2 plus the bombers that Danke is able to defend with. They look like they're going to get quite a bit of work done. Look at those... Look at those T1 units just dying under fire. And he goes down here, down the path of least fence. Good choice, in my opinion. So he's getting, he's getting some mechs over here, that's not bad. And this is sneaky, I think that must have been a drop from Drags, which I'm sorry I didn't see, coming up round the bottom. But there's enough T2 swarming in from Danke that I think this is going to be wiped out in due course. Yeah, 
yeah but it did get three mixes and a hydro so it could have been worse meanwhile we have pressure coming in from Danke again and Drags has been setting up a base here but it's not a great base as yet however that's a decent amount of T2 from Pocote and which way is this fight going to go? I don't know. Meanwhile though I see tactical missiles firing in the north. RCX has set up a little base here and he's put radar and stuff. What are those missiles going for? Are they trying to get a comm snipe? Huh. They are not. Four tactical missiles taking out one T1 mechs. I've got to say I do not think that is a great use of resources but you know I was not the reason why. Meanwhile, how are we doing down here? Danke has pushed back Dragst. We have a restorer out for Dragst who is doing some decent air work there. And it's just forcing Danke to fall back to where he's got turrets because there's not enough in there to stop a restorer. However, it takes a few hits, the restorer, and Dragst pulls it back that's probably wise what else have we got going on well it looks like RCX might be pushing in again so he came this far and got pushed back by the gunships and he's just gonna go for it again he's got a big horde of Ilshis with him how many Ilshis is that 27 Ilshis, 4500 DPS, give or take. And it will definitely do the deed. We do have a little bit of T3 here. We have bricks from Spaced. But two bricks, while powerful, are not going to be enough to stop all those Ilshis. Trios wisely withdraws his engine. He knows he's just going to lose this expansion. It's going to hurt. That is a, a decent number of mexes, and Code Team are already ahead in Eco, and they've almost caught up on total Eco collected, and this will only make the difference worse. RCX is also at TF Land. He's got a lightning tank in there providing anti air support and an Ophium. Forward come the bricks. There's three of them, and they're able to range the Ilshis. This could be a threat, though. There's a GC under construction for Trios. Will he finish it in time, or will RCX just charge in and make a mess of things before the GC finishes? He's going to try and make a mess of things. There are now multiple bricks and loyalists though for Spaced and this feels like it might be a waste. Those bricks are going to do a lot of damage and his comm is falling back and not wanting to risk himself so I think that that's going to turn out to be a mass gift. He sees the GC though. Loyalist explosion stunning those Ilshis for a second there. And the bricks are going to town on these things. The GC finishes and cleans up the rest. So that was a bit of a mass dump, though it did cut a couple of bricks. They know where RCX's comm is too, and the GC could go in after the him, but it's quite a lot of catching up for a relatively so experimental. I don't think it would be worth the chase. Where is the GC going to go? But the eco damage there is real. Look at that. That's 160, give or take, mass lead now for Cold Team. And they've overtaken Hot Team into mass collected for the first time during the game. So, that is pretty painful for the Hot Team. And. That force from RCX is now being bolstered by Othiums rather than Ilshis. He's got a shield protecting him from Drax, which is a nice um, addition. 
Those seven mobile shields are better, so if I were RCX, I would get one of my own shields doing that. Because seven mobile th shields are, of course, T3. And if he isn't overthrowing enough power to run one measly little mobile shield, then what's he doing? That is the GC from Trios being given to Spaced, who is pushing forward on it. And rather than attack this big f force that RCX has, he's sending it round this way, where he might get into RCX's weak, dangly, juicy bits at the back of his base. RCX has started a chicken. I thought I thought I saw the notification. Here it is, and she's got a good lot of build power on it. But that GC is going to be hard to stop. He's sending his swarm of Othiums in. And that's a decent number of Othiums, and against the GC alone they might take it, but there's a decent amount of spam, including several bricks, backing up the GC. And RCX is retreating until he can come to a better position, but the GC opens fire. And RCX continues to flee as Othiums get sucked up by those tractor claws. Spaced out wondering whether he should just go straight in there or cut off RCX's com. There are two coms on the front line in the south though as Danky points out and so the GC is coming down in this direction and RCX thinks he's got enough to push in he's building a wall of point defense to fall back to and there's a decent horde of restorers from drags to, that's six now RCX says he's going to engage let's see how this fight goes down well I'm going to say the answer is not well they're barely scratching it and RCX's force is all dying the restorers come in though but there are bouncers in here multiple bouncers and the restorers start just falling out of the sky, and that is painful. However, Restorers have a lot of hit points to chew through, and so Trios sends in ASFs, and RCX's force is mashed. And this GC is going to continue its unstoppable rampage. This looks like quite a turn in favour of Cold Team, but now... In favour of Cold Team, in favour of Hot Team. But Cold Team are now 200 eco ahead. And so we are going to have to see whether they're going to be able to do anything with that. That chicken is into the green and it's not going to be denied by this push because that push is now heading south. What is in the line of fire for that GC? There are these two comms there. There's a decent amount of stuff here, but enough to stop a GC? I don't know. And the GC is heading back for the bases. If it can inflict damage here, where there's basically nothing to defend, RCX finishes his chicken, though. Where is he going to send it? HQs are definitely at risk. <clears throat> Pocote loses his Randage kill, or even worse, Drax loses his Airage kill. That could be a real turn up for the books, and the Restorers are coming out and trying to defend, but with those bouncers, or all the bouncers appear to have stopped moving, it could be hard for Cold Team to stop them, and in comes the GC. There are lines of point defense being thrown up, and if I were Drax, I would be doing the same thing here. He's putting up T1 point defenses to start with. Meanwhile, though, RCX has a different plan, as we can see on the minimap. RCX is sending his chicken forward, rather than coming back to defend this base against the, the um, GC. So I think we'd better see what both these experimental charges are doing. On the left, the GC continues its rampage. 
on the right the chicken opens fire on spaced out's forward base there's a decent amount of t3 backing it up but this chicken this this is horrific for cold team the air grid is under fire the t3 p gens are going down this is brutal pocket is base is already mashed the air H kill for Drax is going down, but on this side, RCX is paying back in kind as his GC smashes into the his GC, his chicken. Don't blame me, they both look the same. His chicken smashes into the forward base of Spaced Out, and he's gonna walk over that. Meanwhile, RCX is at home putting up an awful lot of T2 point defense, and he needs to. Look at this, the Mexes have been taken out, the air grid's been taken out. Hot team are back to being 100 eco ahead. But, Spaced Out has lost one base, and if RCX has anything to say about it, he's about to lose another. Trios, however, finishes a GC, which is coming forward to defend, and in combination with the turrets from Spaced Out, it might be able to do just that. An army from Pokute comes back to try and stop the GC, but the GC is on five vets. It's over its starting health despite being into the yellow. RCX sees the GC, but Trios is falling back with the GC. Does he think that's too much for the GC to take? I mean, the chicken is being hit by the point defences and Spaced Out is running. What else can RCX do other than keep pushing? Well, he's going to run away from that GC and just go and take out Drag Space. Good choice. Meanwhile, the GC, rather than taking out RCX's base, which I think would have been the better choice, is heading forward to cut off the comms of Dragged and well, Kultik's com has run away somewhere, but the forces supporting that GC are still making a mess of Dragged expansion. The GC from Trios pursues RCX's force and sucks a couple of them up, but Dragged has lost a lot of his base to RCX's chicken. I'm loving this. We have experimenters on each side wrecking each other's bases. Offense is the best defense, my dudes, and Dragged didn't cancel his upgrade. The GC opens fire on him. Boom! Drags is our first ejection over half an hour into the game as the GC just smashes his face in. Meanwhile, Danky's base over here is being taken apart by the chicken from RCX and this silly little GC is just running after it. Wait for me! Wait for me! My friends, RCX's chicken is not going to wait because if he does, that GC will laser him in the back, which would not be a nice experience. And RCX pushes forward. Presumably he's going to come for this forward base now where Danky has started a monkey, but that won't be finished in time. However, RCX is going to have more things on his mind very soon as the GC on full vet regening fast from spaced comes towards RCX's base. Round and round they go. Where it ends nobody knows. Up comes the GC from space. Down goes the, GC, the chicken from RCX and down following him comes the GC from Trios. I've been saying chicken and GC it by mistake for the other one quite a lot of times and that's because in my mind they're they're pretty interchangeable as you see in the chicken. In what circumstances do you prefer the GC and what circumstances do you prefer the chicken? Tell me in the comments below. Meanwhile though, we have to zoom in here as the GC oh there's a chicken two thirds complete and if the GC can deny that, that would be pretty nice, but he'd better deal with the point defences first. But he's not focusing on the point defence. He's focusing on the ones under the shields, while these ones... What's he targeting? Is he targeting 
He's targeting the power, fine. They'll take down the shields, but it means he's shedding an awful lot of health in the GC. Meanwhile, that's an equally awful lot of point defense from Danke, because Kong is running away there. And so the chicken from RCX is getting work done, but he's taking a lot of hits. And if this GC from Krios finally catches up, then it's going to be a problem for RCX, who's a chicken does have full red, but is into the yellow. And the fight commences. Meanwhile, the GC is focusing this chicken foundation rather than killing the PDs. Please, space, kill the PDs. And look at that GC shed health. 12,000, 10,000, 9,000, 8,000. On this side, the battle is definitely going the way of Krios, and RCX's hero chicken is finally going to die. 2,000 hit points on this GC. Down goes RCX's chicken at last. 2,000 hit points, 1,900 hit points. Where? As this little clutch of units from Pocote continues to shoot it in the back. 1,700, 1,600. Is this GC going to survive? 1,500 hit points. But it's sucking the things up. I think that this GC is actually going to survive. And I think that that is going to be the turning point of the game. Sure, it's only got 2,000 hit points, but what have Cold Team got now to stop this GC as it's sitting there regenerating its health? <sighs> that was intense, my dudes. But we've got to look over here because uh, if at first you don't succeed, right? RCX is coming in with another chicken and another force of Othiums. But Trios has a GC waiting for him. Taking out the air rage kill would be a nice win if he could get it. I don't... But should he focus down the GC first? I think that he's already lost enough hits to the GC that the air rage kill would be a better pickup. And RCX seems to agree he takes... He tries to take out... Is he going to get neither of them? He does take out the air HQ, but he loses the chicken, and I think the GT is going to clean up the rest of that. Over on this side, we have the GC, the very damaged GC from Spaced, coming into RCX's base, and Pokote resigns. I would too, if I were in his position. He had only 14 must coming in. Mind you, RCX is only 20 must come again despite these mexes because he's been so power stored. RCX is all on his own and the GC, this very damaged GC, but the GC nonetheless, is advancing into his base. Here's RCX's com coming forward with another chicken. And he might actually be able to overcharge that GC, especially if these um if these PDs do their work. They killed my beautiful Air T3HQ, complains Trios. Well, can you blame them? You're fighting them. And with only 8,000 hit points left, that GC is going to be toast in the face of this chicken. But, do you know what is not going to be toast in the face of the chicken? I will tell you, it is this other GC, which is coming in from Danke. So Trios must have given that to him. And RCX calls the GG as he sees another GC descending on his base as he's out he code 4 to 1 and the thing is they had two bases left and RCX had only half a base left so despite the massive destruction wrought on both sides a victory for hot team what a game my loyal viewers both teams had their bases smashed by the opposing experimenters could have gone either way but code team which just took a little more damage as Spaced's GC that Trios gave him did just that little more in the initial push and that I think was that I think was crucial. There was just that little more to stop RCX than there was to stop Spaced out. Anyway, tell me what you thought of that in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.